So basic stats, uh, there are 6 basic stats which will affect a large number of aspects of a character's combat worthiness against given opponents. So that would be strength, agility, vitality, intelligence, dexterity, and luck. But since this is a spear knight guide, we'll just focus on the 3 main attributes which is strength, vit, and int. So mainly, strength affects the physical melee attack power of a character. The higher strength is, the more damage you do. And as a bonus, strength also increases capacity of our inventory. So this is what strength does more in detail. It increases melee attack damage by 1 per point of SDR, and additional 3 damage if it's divisible by 10. And I'll just post the formula for the total bonus damage. Second stat would be Vit or Vitality. This measures the survivability of a character. It provides a variety of benefits. Uh, first is it increases the maximum hit points or HP of a character. It also reduces damage from physical attacks and reduces status infliction rate and duration by a certain amount. And lastly, the Vitality increases the effectiveness of healing potions by 2% per Vit. And third option is Int. This stat will give us decent amount of SP which allows a character to cast more spells. And as a bonus, it also reduces the damage taken from spell casters. And to be more precise, Int increases max SP by 1% per Int and increases SP healing items effectiveness by 2% per Int. And lastly, it increases SP recovery by 1% per 6 full points of int. And my personal preferred stat is full points on SDR, which is strength, and all the points will be allocated at fit. And I have zero decks, which I would explain later in the video why. Gears. The most questions commonly asked is should I focus on over upgraded items, safely upgraded items that has cards, or items that has great fort enchantment. On my personal opinion, items with fort enchantment goes at the top of my list since it's very difficult to snap. Second would be safely upgraded items that has cards, and the last one is the over upgraded items since it has little amount of damage boost equivalent to the amount of resources spent. And on this video, the first item that you should prioritize as a Spear Knight is Halberd. This is the best weapon that has the highest damage output for large monsters, and each tier gives a decent damage boost for large monsters, which harmonizes with the Pierce skill since it hits 3 times for large type monsters. Second item, or items rather, that you should prioritize is ignore defense items like Ancient Cape and Rosa Bracelet. Or if you get lucky, you could buy tights or staunch armor that has 10% to 20% ignored defense for the fourth enchantment. And to compare those two armors, tights give a decent damage boost but lacks defense for survivability, 
while staunch armor has a great defense but needs staunch ring to activate the additional 5% attack boost to compensate for the lost damage boost using tides. And for enchantments, I would highly suggest that you should enchant your items to have at least 30 plus attack to give you a decent attack damage. For deposited cards, having 2 Mino cards on my weapon and depositing 1 Mino card will give you 50% ignore defense on all monsters including small and medium sized ones. Another question that is usually asked about Mino cards and halberd combo is that 1 Mino card and T4 halberd has 50% damage on large sized monsters. If I deposited 1 Mino card in my handbook, would it work? Unfortunately, it does not work. Deposited Mino card effect only works on two Mino cards for spirit type Lord Knights. One of the reasons why I don't have decks is because there is a card that reduces flea by 50, which is the Thief Bug card, once you deposited it on your adventurer's handbook. And second reason is because of a Lord Knight skill, which will be explained later in the video. Skills. So main Lord Knight skills that you should prioritize is Lord's Aura. This skill increases your attack power and your party member's attack power by 30%. And I would highly suggest that you max this skill first up to level 10. Second skill is Concentration. This grants the whole party with Endure effect and you would gain 20% attack and 50% hit in exchange for death provided by equipments by 40% for 45 seconds. Uh, this is the main reason why I don't have decks since I rarely miss if I use this skill. And for the 40% defense penalty, you could just gradually reduce that if you have a lot of gold badges to get the rune that decreases the defense penalty for this skill. Third is Frenzy. This skill will fully heal your character, increase your move speed by 30% in exchange for 50% death. This skill is like a free full heal, however it reduces your death by 50% and the heals that you would be receiving would be penalized depending on your frenzy's skill level. Every level on your frenzy reduces 10% penalty on heals received. Fourth would be Call of Justice, and this skill has a simple description, every 5 fit will be equivalent to 5 attack. And now to our knight skills, Pierce will be our main skill, so max that skill. Damage applies combo attack based on enemy size. Small monsters will get hit 1 time, medium monsters 2 times, and large monsters will get hit 3 times. That's why Halberd is the perfect weapon for Spear Lord Knights since it gives a large damage boost on large monsters. Second would be Spear Mastery. This gives additional attack for spear type weapons. Third would be Cavalry Combat and Cavalry Mastery. This kill gives 20% more damage to large sized monsters while riding a mount. Fourth skill would be Heart of Steel. This reduces 90% incoming damage for 5 seconds. And just a side note, I would recommend Aura Blade only if you have a lot of gold badges to put runes on this skill to boost your attack further. For Swordsman skills, there are 3 main skills that I personally prefer. That would be Max Taunt since it reduces defense of monsters by 21%. Second is Magnum Break. This is an additional 20% attack boost and converts your element to fire for 10 seconds, which is really great for bursting down earth type MVPs. And lastly would be the increased recuperative power since it boosts healing effect for HP regen items by 50%. And just a reminder, 
Fierce Lord Knights are very powerful on large type monsters. However, they are really weak when it comes to small size and medium size monsters. So I would recommend that you achieved at least rank C adventure ranking to switch bash type builds or adequate builds for grinding or hunting monsters that is not large sized mob. So for runes, our runes are very simple for spear type lord knights. Just focus on getting ignore defense runes, spear mastery runes, and flat attack runes. And when I say flat attack runes, those are the basic runes that doesn't require gold badges, they just need contribution points. But if you're really a competitive player or a hardcore gamer that has a lot of gold badges, I would recommend runes for Aura Blade to boost your attack and Concentration runes to remove defense penalty on that skill. And you could play around in your runes and try to get some other skills. Since this is my first audio voiceover, can't leave any comments and suggestions for improvement. And as always, thank you. Hit the subscribe.